Our proprioceptive system is composed of neurons in our muscles and supporting ligaments. It's kind of the position sensor where we are located in space. It is the reason you can put your foot on the gas and the brake without um, looking at your feet to know where they are. They also have a load compensating mechanism. If I put my hands up and put a um, stack of books on it and you start piling more weight on, my, on these books, um, I can sense that it's getting heavier and I use more effort in order to keep those things positioned where they are. That's, that's normally the skeletal muscle that's in your body. In your eye, you have proprioceptive sensors, but they do something quite different. They don't give us position or load compensating mechanism. They give us position where things are located in space. Well, people that have proprioceptive problems, Bill, have a series of symptoms that come up. And generally, it's a cascade of things that happen over time. Um, they don't wake up with these symptoms, but it's something that happens most of the time when they're doing near work. And the symptoms are pretty consistent. Most of them will complain of headaches. And, and the headaches start generally frontally, around the eyes, around the frontal area. Many people think they have sinus headaches. And from there, they migrate uh, most of the time to the back of the head in the occipital portion. And um, they have that usually with the onset of near work. People that work on computers, people that do a lot of near tasks during the day. Um, other symptoms that can come along is people many times will complain that their eyes will burn or feel dry or gravelly. That's kind of a referred pain symptom where, where the, uh, the eyes uh, have a very short, uh, I should say they have a very limited vocabulary. They know that I burn, I feel dry, or I'm just uncomfortable. And uh, another symptom people will have is that they'll notice that they get sleepy if they read a book. They'll sit down and, and it'll just, you know, make them extremely tired when they start to read for a period of time. And then a symptom that uh, others will have many times is that they'll look at something and feel like the words will run and blur together. You know, they feel like they have to blink, 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 or reposition the book or reposition their glasses in order to clear the image that they're looking at. There are many people that have a problem. You know, if you look statistically, if you uh, Google computer vision syndrome, for instance, you'll find that, you know, over 180 million people work on a computer and they estimate more than 75% of those people have a problem. Uh, Bosch and Lomas come out and said there's a million new cases a year of people that have near point problems and working up close. And, and um, the AOA has also identified, you know, 14% of every person that walks in your door is coming in because of, you know, a computer related or a near point task type problem. So there is just a multitude of people out there that suffer from this that, that don't exactly know what they have or what's causing their problems, but there are many, many people out there that uh, have difficulty with this. Well, you know, a Fourier test tests someone under a monocular condition. In other words, one eye sees one target and the other eye sees another target. But that, that really doesn't measure what's going on with your proprioceptive system. As we talked earlier, your proprioceptive or your, your skeletal muscle proprioceptive system has load compensating mechanism. It, it knows where it is and how much weight or how much effort it takes to exert on something. If you look back and forth across the room, you'll notice that the room does not move, but your eyes move across what you're looking at. In contrast to that, if you take your finger and push on your eye from the side, and cover one eye might be easier to identify it, you notice that the room moves. So there, there's no evidence that our proprioceptive system that controls our visual system gives any conscious response to where our eyes are. It's an internal and interceptive sense. And so the best way to check these people, and the only way that I've found to adequately measure what they really need, is set up a condition in which peripherally their vision is binocular. In other words, you leave their peripheral vision binocular, but centrally, their central vision, you leave monocular. And in years and years ago, you know, the old story is some of the old ways are better than the new ways. Uh, a gentleman uh, figured out a system, and it was called the Turville Infinity Balance, and it set up those same uh, identifying characteristics in which you could measure someone's eye alignment in a much, much different way. It's a difficult test to administer because you need a long 20-foot exam room and uh, we're not equipped with how we're doing things today to do that very often, but the best way to measure them are under those binocular and monocular conditions. What we've decided to use or what we have used or helped develop, Bill, as you know, is the, is the OptiLine. And that is an instrument in which takes a series of tests, both monocularly and binocularly at the same time, and it coordinates those two points. In other words, your proprioceptive system tells you to focus at one location, uh, your interoceptive proprioceptive system and your gift of sight, one of your five senses, tells you that you should be focused at another location. And the disparity between those two points is what you need to measure. And when you close the gap between those two, you can abate these people's symptoms. And so um, that is ultimately the best way to solve these people's problems.